Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, good evening. I have been the whole day seated in the same chair, in the same position, looking into the same screen that I'm doing now. So, a bit tired. I will try to make it short, <laughs> as I always say. Because uh, I want to keep working because it's something that I like. So root chakra today. Um, so the reason why we are going, going to speak about work today is because related to the root chakra, it means the manifestation. It means the matter, the action, the doing things here in this reality. So I recommend to you to read blog today because uh, it's been so much and so many concepts of work that um, that me myself had to. Like, I was like kind of dizzy when I was writing this, and. Um, and there are so many concepts that I had to go once and again, once and again to read what I was writing. <laughs> so it's, uh, I, I thought it was amazing to go through the process of how all these words connect one another and, and how they, uh, they show you the origin of the things that we use today. We're going to start talking about the concept of what work is for us today. Because today we say that work is something that dignifies the people. This is a concept that we have today, but the concept of work has been changing for so long through history that we need to understand every one of the steps. So I guess I'm going to use the board. We're going to start from the present and we are going to go backwards. Hmm? So first of all, let's remember that today, even if you don't like it, we are living in a capitalistic society, which is global. Hmm? Um, <laughs> I was just asking, do you remember why capitalism? But it would be easier if we were 30 people in a classroom <laughs> with this, with this um, question. So remember, capitalism comes from the word capital. Capital means the main city, but the origin of capital comes from cap, that is head. So cap, the head, is the one that organizes the, the all rest of the body. So the capitalism is the idea that there is one mind that tries to administrate all the resources around and distribute it according to a strategy. Hmm? So the capitalism is related to a strategy of resources, of uh, administration of resources, okay? So for the capitalism, the work, the concept of work is something that helps you as a tool to create your own resources and to administrate your own resources. So for the capitalism, the work is like the key of dignifying the person to achieve, to have resources and to administrate it by freedom, okay? I'm not speaking about uh, the capitalism as it works now. I'm speaking about capitalism as, as an idea, okay? How it would be better. Okay, so in the other hand, until really short period in time, we had the communism. In the hand of communism, remember that it's a community. The origin is to live together, to be in union. For the point of view of community, work is also very important, but not to produce resources to grow, but to dignify the soul. Okay? Which means that the communism is about, uh, is about understanding that the person is able to uh, create, to manifest, to produce something by its own soul, by its own attributes, 
and creates the um, uh, creates something outside. So it dignifies the soul that is able to create. But for the communism, that work is not to grow and expand yourself and administrate resources. For because here comes the state and says, I will take everything that you have produced and I will divide it in equal parts between all the people. Okay, so <clears throat> um, it doesn't matter how much you work, you will get the same result always. Okay, but the communism say that work is just to dignify the soul of a human to be able to create and do stuff. Mm -hmm. So the capitalism is the one looking for the dignity of the body. And the communism is the one looking for the dignity of the soul. So both of them, uh, both of them says the work to work is the way in which we reach that dignity. So the work in both systems will be the key to dignify the being. But the capitalism will use the work with competence, competition, and the communism will work it with equality, all being the same. So the communism ends because basically they work for the community, but they forget important part of the system, which is that is the individual the one willing to expand and grow, not the group. So the communism work for the community as something that is growing all equals, but they miss the part that is the self, the being, the one that pushes the group. So that's why all the people were trying to be themselves and in communism you can't, because that's not good. So that's inner uh, in a process makes that there's no production, no growing, so the economics fails and suddenly no communism it doesn't work. So basically, between the capitalism and the, uh, because the communism fails, the communist thinkers take the energy of the capitalism and they create a new branch that we would call socialism. So the socialism creates like this middle system in which there is no competition, but neither, but also you allow the growth of the inner self of the people. Mm -hmm. And again, you take the work as a key of dignity. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it, but I leave it here anyway, so you can have the frame. Communism. Soul's dignity, capitalism, body's dignity, socialism in the middle, try to find a balance between both of them. So what is the problem now with socialism? Socialism doesn't work neither, because we are in the 21st century, and these are systems from the 19th century, so two centuries before. So these systems doesn't work anymore for our society today. Okay, to have this this idea, the communism takes care of the group, so it doesn't care about the individual. I don't care the individual, says the communism. I care about the group. We need to help all of them. And the capitalism says, I don't care about the group. I just care about the individual. So be free, individual. Do whatever you want. I don't care about the group. This is why neither of both of them work, because the capitalism is not taking care of the group and the group needs help, and the communism is not taking care of the individual and the individual, individual needs to grow. So it doesn't work, none of them. And the socialism is saying individuals be free and let's take care of the group with the freedom takes the wrong thing of both of them trying to control the individual and to give freedom to the group. Freedom to the group, but control the individual. So it's like, uh, so socialism has this conflict. Why? So why happens this? Because the three ideas are built by, um, by concepts or philosophies that are populist. 
So what is populism? Populism comes from the word populus, Latin, that means uh, the people, okay? People. So what is populism? You have populism in rights and left, because both of them, even if they are capitalistic or communism, are just ideas, are just ideas of the population. Okay, a population, a big group of people. So a lot of people share an idea, a philosophy, and instead of taking care of their own philosophy inside, they just are pushed by the main idea of the group. So that is why they are pushed by the populus. Okay, the movement of the population is populism. So what is a populism? Why a populism is born because of the unconscious society the society the humanity is unconscious why because it needs to to survive it's looking for survival why because we need to eat we need to defend ourselves so we need the group the family remember we have been spoken about uh, speaking about this we need the group to take care of us so that's why through thousands of years we have created the idea that we need the others in order to survive. So that's why when a group thinks in one way, everyone tries to think exactly as the group, just in case they can die. And that's how a people create an idea. And we call that populism. Now, why a population, a group, exists? Because they need to survive in order to have food. They want food. So they need that food. So they start to figure out the way in which all this group can survive. And the first thing that they do is we need food, something to eat. So we have to go and hunt, we have to go and sow, we have to harvest. So we have to do all the things. And in order to get those products, you have to do many things to put your strength to work to to dig the ground, to hunt, to have wounds. So the body starts to hurt, to suffer. In Latin, this physical suffering is called labor. The first labor that we all experience in our lives is giving birth, being birth, being born, sorry. So being born is the first suffering that we have. And that's what we call the labor of being given birth. Hmm? So from that moment on, everything that we have, uh, everything for which we have to suffer to get food or a product for myself will be called a labor, something that makes me suffer, that has pain on it. Hmm? So from, from, from that moment, everything that starts to be created is all related to the suffering. So check the blog in josoy.red uh, and there you will find all the explanations of um, the origin of the, of the words uh, work, job, and so on. Hmm? First, we go to one of the main um, of all history, um, human civilization. The human civilization was divided in different stages. For sure, you have heard about the concept of the age of iron, the age of bronze, when we speak about the human history. And this is because this is because um, um, the the archaeologist before the the carbon 14 test existed um, they uh, they could only interpret the the times of history according to the metals that humans were using in that period of time so the um, the blacksmith blacksmith was the most important job in that period of time and for us it's really important because that's how we knew the different ages of um, of humanity in history. 
the blacksmith, blacksmith, sorry, the blacksmith is one of the most um, <coughs> important works in history because everyone needed a blacksmith, a blacksmith to do all their job. Because the, the one that works in the fields, the one that works in the castle, in the construction, in the kitchen, in the jewelry, all of them need an, a blacksmith okay, to do the tools. So that was the most important job that ever, ever, anyone could have. Okay? So, um, so that's why also to be a blacksmith is the one that's with the iron. And iron in Latin is ferrum. So the one that lives on the pressure of the ferrum is the sufferum, sufferum. So subferrum is under the ferrum, under the iron, which is suffering. The concept of suffering is the one that is under the pressure of the whole society, of the whole work. The blacksmith was the one using this tool in the ancient time that was called tripalium. Tripalium is the concept of three, three pieces of wood where they used to tie the horses and some animals <coughs> to work on their, on their pots. I don't know the word in English for herradura. Uh, if you know, like this iron thing that they put on the horse's pots. Um, so they would work with that and um, yeah, horseshoes, okay. The um, tripalium was a tool of black blacksmith to work with the animals. So in war times, all the tools become weapons. So the tripalium was used for torture. So they used to tie people there and they would use the tools of the blacksmith to, to make bad things to the people. So now look into this. In the ancient times, whoever was a blacksmith, blacksmith had a good job, has a money and earning and um it, it was it was good to be a blacksmith because you have many things to do a lot of money so that's why to have a tripalium was good which creates the word uh, trabajo, uh trabajo in spanish and other languages so it's good to have a tripalium at home because that means that you have work okay and, but on the other hand, the same thing, the same tool was used to torture. So that's why if you have a tripalium, was also to suffer and to create suffering. They are the two origins of the word tripalium, trabal. So the word tripalium or um, tra trabal, uh, travel, you say also travel is something that matches the suffering and the ability to get resources. Hmm? Uh, in English, you may use the word travail, travail um, to describe something that is that really hurts, something that is uh, that makes you suffer a lot. So in the subconscious, for the population, the populism, the word the word travail, labor, is related to the suffering of doing something, to accomplish something, that you need to work hard to sweat in order to get what you want. The word labor or travail in our substance is related to the concept of those things that I have to do obligated if I don't want to die, to make an effort. In the cultures, we created the idea that the person who work, who has a labor, are the ones that are going to live fine because they will have what eat, they will have where to sleep, and they will be able to reproduce. This is why 
work starts to be like a synonym for dignity because because of the work because of the labors i am able to survive hmm? this is what is used by the communism for the soul and the capitalism for the body hmm? so these two systems the one of the community and the one of the capital creates the concept the only way to be to have dignity the only way to have dignity is through work so if you don't have work you don't have dignity you know how it starts to be created so whoever doesn't have a job is expelled from the capitalism or slaved for the communism. So there is a moment in between these two systems that there is someone that just gets conscious. And suddenly that person doesn't look into the capitalism of the body or the communism of the soul it starts to be connected with the unity of the spirit so in that moment that person realizes about something which is oh i am the creator so in that moment is when myself starts to say i can do exactly the same with no need of suffering just with pleasure this person recognized that there's no need <clears throat> for the soul to live through others in the community or to compete with others in the capital of the body the the being that becomes aware recognizes that there's no need to survive because the body is eternal. So you get detached from physical things. You don't need physical things anymore. You just use physical things for a moment. And on the other side, there's no need to be accepted by a group or to work for a group to be. I accept myself. So from the freedom of my being, I use both systems. When I recognize that I am not in the need of suffering, of travail, of labor, what I recognize is that, is that I am the creator of that. I am, and I am not suffering anymore. So I realized that this is my own creation, that this is my design. I am the only one operator of my own reality and operate my own reality <coughs> is the one that creates the word office. Office comes from the word opus, that means opera, a craft. To operate the master opera. So the office is the thing that you operate because of yourself, because you realize who you are. So you will become the creator. You become the own creator of your things. When you are pushed by the environment to do something, you work, you survive, you are in labor. When you do it by yourself, being aware of what you do, 
It's your opera. That's your own operation. Your office. So, to wrap this up, remember that to be spiritual is not to let the material world away, to leave all the physical things and doesn't care about the money and all these things. No. To be spiritual is to be coherent, that you are using matter, not matter is using you. When matter uses you, all the world, the weight of the world is on you, the iron of the planet, and that's suffering. But when you create your own reality using the iron, create things, that's what you call to have an office, to operate reality. That's your opera. So, important this, when you connect with your divine, usually you will start to say, I don't want to work with this anymore, I want to be free to do whatever I want. And sometimes we think that if we do whatever we want, we won't have the money driving the system or for the system that would, that would be terrible, the end of the system. But no, when we become aware of ourselves and we do what we have come to do in this world is when the, is when the system starts to work really. Because you are doing what you are supposed to do. So that is helpful for the system. The only thing is that when you, are when you start to do what you are supposed to do from your inner self, there is no more ideology. You disappear. So now, if you ask yourself, well, maybe I, I want to do these different things, but, but I need the money, I need to work, I need to do this and that in order to accomplish my, my, my goal. So if I don't work, I won't have that. So the thinking here would be, why do you think? Why do you think that you need to win something that is not good for you in order to have things, to buy things that are good for you? How is that? So for example, myself, I am really well economically. I cannot complain. But I don't work. I have never worked in my life. And some people say, I work. Never. Because what I do is what I am. Since the moment I recognize who I was, I was just doing what I was. That's it. And I've seen people telling me, but this is not work. You never worked and you live fine with no work. And I said, yes, because I choose not to suffer. I am all the day doing things constantly, many things, but they are not work. It's me. And of course, that scares to be in the edge and saying, what, what do I do? I'm not reaching anything. What do I do? But remember, you are the creator. We are the creator. So if you create fear, you will have fear. I spoke even more than I, than I expected. And this is because I enjoy it. I'm not working. <laughs> uh, the vibration for today is Bo. The statement for today is, I am the, the universal child's home. The code for today is destiny. The extremes of this path or strings of the web are called destinies. 
Implicitly in them exists the word purpose. If we take a note, the string and another note, we can interpret that in geometry exists an origin, a path, and a destiny. But that, but that origin turns, turns at the same time into another destiny in the patterns. Thus, all become a purpose. Destiny is then not a final, but part of, a, of an integration and comprehension process within the evolutive path. So let's go to the alignment. You sit properly, <laughs> properly, you sit comfortable. And uh, and um, what I was going to say, and close your eyes, <laughs> sorry. I was suddenly I was uh, I was couldn't think I was thinking in Italian <laughs> I couldn't speak in English fire in my hands, its heat in my chest and my face, and I feel surrounded by other people. I perceive the deep light of the fire, yellow, orange and red, and the flames moving like snakes. Under fuego. I observe the circle of people around the fire, all seated together under the stars. I recognize that the people around the fire are all those that represent my co-workers, the people that I share the work with, employees, bosses, friends, partners, patients, clients, all the people that represent the work in your life. <coughs> El fuego es la oficina. I recognize that for me, the fire is what connect me to all of them. Is the office, the workplace, and the light, the flames, represent my office, my own hobby, what I really love to do. Watch the fire and ask yourself 
what is that I love to do the most? What is my attribute, my office, my opera? I am free. Am I free from all these things, with all these people, to do what I like? What I have come here to do? Recognize that all the people that is around you are the kids of the universe that got together here to find a way to get what they need, the basic needs, to survive in this world. And they got together to work for it. O para la expansión del grupo. Ask yourself now, are you working for the survival of the group or for the expansion of the group? Ask yourself, are you suffering, feeling trapped in your work? Or you feel expanded and free, growing through it? Is your job a condition of the group? Or it is your own creation? Vuelvo a observar el fuego contemplando mi oficio, aquello que me hace sentir expandido y libre. I observe again deep in the fire, that office that is mine, where I find myself free, expanded. Y con mi canto absorbo su luz dentro de mi cuerpo. And with my singing, I absorb this light inside of my body and my office becomes my home and the workers become free children of the cosmos. I am the home of the universal children I am the home of the universal children I am the home of the universal children. Deja que los niños vengan a mí, pues yo soy libertad. Let the children come to me, for I am freedom.
Take a deep breath and come here and now. Each one and its own time. Thank you everybody for being here. See you tomorrow at the same time.